All right, everyone. This is going to be a follow-up to my other video about servicing an all-in-one uh, cooler. This one is the Course Air um, H60i, I think it is. It's, a, it's an older model, but that's mainly older models is what you're going to be doing servicing on. Uh, first thing, I got a lot of questions on the last video, so I'm going to answer those on this one. Um, no, you shouldn't have to service your all-in-one cooler. It shouldn't need to be serviced, but from years of use, um, a lot of uh, heating spikes, things like that, you'll have what's called permentation, where the water will start to absorb into the hoses and the level will start to go down. And once these hoses start to absorb water and the level goes down, then your pump's gonna run dry then your spikes, uh, temperatures are gonna spike in the computer and you're gonna have a bad day. Also, some of these were not made the best. Uh, they had some manufacturing things here and there. Uh, manufacturing has come a long way in the last four or five years and um, these will get clogged up with just bits of metal and material that are stuck in between these. Um, also, there's been cases of like the Enermax uh, versions of these Sometimes we'll have mold and bacteria in them from the factory, and after six months of use, they'll be completely full of mold. I know a lot of people were asking what size bit to use to get these off. Um, I just use a PH1, it seems to be the best one that fits, but you will use, need to use a lot of pressure to get them out, just so you don't strip it. But once you put the right amount of pressure in there, It'll be good. Now, uh, a lot of people were complaining that I didn't actually fill up the last one, which is this exact same one. Um, so we're actually gonna go through the fill process and show exactly how to drain it, fill it, and get it working. There you go. And then you want to remove this rubber barrier. And there you have it. And then all you have to do is tip up the whole system. And away it goes. And the more you move the radiator around, the more fluid should come out. All right, and there you go. All the fluid is out. Only difference in this that you'll see in yours will be there will be an impeller here that you don't have to touch. Other than that, everything else is the same. So then to fill it comes the fun part. Now, I've had very good luck with using just a regular old turkey flavor injector. Uh, this one actually came with, I think this was called like liquid butter or something like that. Um, I haven't actually used the liquid butter. I literally just bought it for the injector. Um, it will come with a metal needle that goes in this end. Don't need it. So first, I'd like to start with the pump sitting on the end of the table and the reservoir dangling below. We'll take the injector and fill it with water and this is a little bit of a process and you can see there is two holes, one there, one there for each pipe. So you want to just put the water right into one pipe just like so and just slowly feed it in there. And now you can try and I'm trying to be more uh, trying to be more careful with it. But if you wanted to, you could submerge this entire thing in water. Yeah, fill up the sink, fill up the bathtub, submerge the whole thing. 
Um, only downside to that is once you're done, you're going to have to let it dry because there is a circuit board in this. And once that circuit board is completely dry, then you can put it. Then you can put it back in the computer and power it up. Other way you could pour water into it if you had it over a bucket and without using the injector. The injector really comes in later on. But as long as you don't plug both holes with water at the same time, because as you're putting water in this way, all your air is escaping out of this one. So if you were to just pour water straight into both of these, it wouldn't take the water. When you fully submerge it, uh, the, the air tries to go to the highest point, so it naturally will eventually evacuate all the air out of the system. Now, if you have water too fast, it will turn on the filter. Just be aware of that. Just slowly. Yeah. And depending on the size of your radiator, this might take a very long time. The slower you go, the more likely you'll get all the air out in one go. And there we go. Let's see, as I put it in there, it comes out that side. So. Now, we can see that both chambers are full, so we want to take the reservoir, or the, I want to take the radiator and kind of work it around. And as you work it around, you'll see the water level go down as you kind of work some of the air out of it. And you'll hear like the chugging noise. some more make sure you keep this as flat as possible this uh, water block because as water might come out of one tube and if you leave it flat it will either go in the center or it'll go into the next tube as you can see we worked enough air out of that to kind of fill it up. All right, I think we got enough air out of it. I don't hear any more noises when I move the radiator around. You will hear a little bit of water noise. All right. I feel pretty good about that. So now it's time to seal it. So you just keep pouring water into it until it gets right up to the screws. Let me take a little bit of it out. A little too much. Just below the screws. And then you'll take the rubber piece and you'll put it back in this way down. Make sure you line up the holes. It'll only go in one way because there's the notches. Press it down. Then put some more water on top of it. And then it's time for the copper plate. And just set the copper plate on top. And start adding screws. I like to put two screws in it to start. And just give them a little starting screw. As you screw it down, the water will come out of the screw holes, and that's perfectly fine. Just snug them. Don't do too tight because you want to make sure you get an even pressure on all the screws right. 
I'm gonna make sure you keep everything level. Sorry for blocking the camera there. And then once you get them all screwed in, go through in a star pattern and snug them as pretty decently tight. You'll know. Right. Just give it. Just be careful not to strip out the screws. That's the biggest thing. Don't strip the screws out. All right. There you go. And that should be 99% of the water. And you should be able to go ahead and start using it right away. Now, if you want to go the extra mile or if it didn't um, fix the problem or you, when you turn it on, you hear a lot of air noises, take these screws out here and you don't have to worry about water on these this is just holding the cap on cap slides right off like this you want to remove this it just kind of goes together like so slide this down as far as you can and then flip it over and you'll see that saw this in my last video all right and then you have this circuit board here you can flip down like so and you have your fill screw so you want to angle that to where it is as high as possible. All right, so you have your fill screw. So you move this down, and you'll have your fill screw. Make sure that is the highest point of the loop. Make sure the radiator is hanging down at the bottom. And take your screwdriver, and this one is a PS2, a PH2. Remove that screw. You see how water squirted out of that? That means it is full. If water did not come out of that, that means there would be air in the lines. And you can, if there's air in the line, you can inject it using this. Now, as you can see, you have the little hole there. And if you wanted to you had some air in the line and you wanted to make sure you got every last inch out. You take your injector, fill it up with as much water as possible without getting any air in, and you stick it right in that hole and push it against it hard so it makes a good tight seal. And then press on the plunger and you'll see the plunger will kick back. And you press and release, press, release and that will force all the air out of the system and you'll even see if there was a massive amount of air you would see the, the syringe fill up with air as you force water into it and then you put the screw back in Tighten it down, make sure you get dry all the water that might have come out, out of it. If you get this circuit board wet, you're going to have to either blow dry it or let it sit for a little bit to get all the water off it. So you'll put the circuit board back, take your foam and put that back. Put the cap back on, like that. You want to 
Make sure your wires are out of the way. Yes, my wires are broken. That's, this whole thing has been through a lot. <laughs> Uh, put your screws back in. And there you go. One water cooler. Put all back together. Uh, this is, and yes. This is a cooler that I've had for a long time. It's been in multiple different uses, different loops and different things done with it. Um, I tried to get a new style one. A Cooler Master one to try and demonstrate this with. But unfortunately the Cooler Master ones are sealed actually quite well. And I was not able, wouldn't be able to drain it without destroying the whole thing. So. Unfortunately, the cheaper ones, uh, which this Cooler Master is, are not made in the same quality the Corsair ones are. And you won't be able to successfully refill these. Um, I do have one more project. And here we have... An Enermax 360 radiator connected to a 1080 Ti water block. And this one's been running for about two months now without any issues. And I'll show you that later on. <laughs> 